Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to this lecture about uh, determination of uh, the kinetic and the mass transfer parameters uh, when we are facing internal diffusion restrictions for our immobilized enzymes. So in the previous lecture we, we discussed how to determine the intrinsic kinetic parameters, what are the different strategies uh, that are being used to determine the kinetic, uh, the intrinsic kinetic parameters when uh, our system is facing internal diffusion restrictions. And today we will discuss uh, a few strategies about how to determine the mass transfer parameters. So the mass transfer parameters uh, in case of internal diffusion restrictions are determined by have been determined by using many empirical equations but using empirical equations there have been a lot of variations and the accuracy the best accurate results are also 80 percent of the diffusivity value of the substrate when it is uh, not incurring any type of restrictions any type of internal or external diffusion restrictions when the medium in the free medium in the free medium the diffusivity of the substrate okay is uh, different than that uh, we encounter it when we immobilize uh, i mean when we have our immobilized situation so in the immobilized uh, case in the heterogeneous systems the diffusivity the effective dis uh, diffusivity is uh, different than that in the case of the free medium so the empirical equations ha have suggested that uh, this effective diff diffus diffusivity is uh, uh, ranges from 20 to 80 percent of the diffusivity uh, than that of the free medium the diffusivity obtained in the free medium so there is a lot of variation using the empirical equations different uh, empirical equations give us different results so <clears throat> other experimental techniques in which we can determine mass transfer limitations the another one is by using radio tracer techniques or simply tracer techniques by using chemically or radioactively labeled substrate we can evaluate the rate of uh, diffusion and hence we can get the uh, effective diffusivity of our substrate in heterogeneous systems another method that has been proposed by grunwald uh, long ago in, in 1989 so according to this method he suggested that uh, we we immobilize the support with inactive enzymes he suggested that we use inactive enzymes or we can divide the sub, uh, support of the enzyme we can remove the enzyme from the i mean we can use the support as such without immobilizing any enzyme or if we, uh, we want to get better results then we must immobilize inactive enzymes these enzymes should not be active they should not be able to catalyze reaction under normal conditions so these enzymes are immobilized in the support and then this in this support along with this inactive enzymes is equilibrated in a saturated solution of the substrate so using a saturated substrate solution this support is immersed in this solution and is allowed to equilibrate for a particular uh, time period and uh, uh, when there is no more depletion in the substrate concentration of this solution so that means our equilibration has completed now we will remove this support from this solution and now we will be having this support with the inactive enzyme and the substrate entrapped within this support so now this uh, this situation of this support now along with the substrate and the inactive enzyme this support is now immersed in a buffer solution a pure buffer solution which does not contain, contain any amount of substrate in it so we will immerse uh, this support which contains the inactive enzyme and the substrate the inactive enzyme is immobilized and the substrate is not immobilized it is just equi equilibrated within the support so when we um, immerse this this support in this buffer solution the substrate would re would release out into the buffer solution and the buffer solution will experience an increase in the substrate concentration now this increase in substrate concentration within this buffer will be monitored continuously and this rate of emission uh, effusion this rate of substrate effusion will be monitored and if we design this experiments in such a manner that the time of effusion of this substrate is long is long enough is is a large value then for spherical geometry Grun, grunwald proposed 
this uh, relationship and in this relationship sf is the final substrate concentration in the buffer solution and this is uh, substrate concentration at any time t and uh, whatever this time t is this time t should be long enough that is just before all the substrate has been released so this uh, value of t is again the time period for which we have measured this substrate concentration and uh, we know that pi is the is a constant r is the gas constant and effective diffusivity this we can calculate and this constant is integrative constant and this can be determined by uh, considering limit conditions so uh, grunwald proposed this relationship and using this relationship we can find out eff effective diffusivity so now after determining effective diffusivity diffusivity we uh, effective uh, diffusion coefficient we can determine the thiele modulus by using the thiele uh, the equation for the thiele modulus for spherical geometry or flat geometry as we have discussed in our previous lectures so we can get uh, all the we can get all the information about the diffusivity using this method and another method that has been proposed later by uh, using the same concept as that used in the external diffusion restrictions and that method is <coughs> the simple uh, linear method of uh, using line weaver burr plot or hinge plot and in this method we perform experiments at throughout the extent of the substrate Uh, profile that is we use a very low substrate concentration and we use a very high substrate concentration so in this uh, approach we can obtain uh, the kinetic as well as the diffusional parameters uh, and this is how we can obtain it that is when we perform simple e uh, experimentation using the line weaver burr plot then at higher substrate concentrations that is at this region this can be divided in two zones zone 1 and zone 2 here the substrate concentration is high and here we have low substrate concentration and when we perform experiments uh, in case of edr we found that we get a single curve a single curve uh, when we perform similar experiments for edr we get a single curve like this as we have observed earlier in my earlier lectures but here in this case we get an inflection point and might get an inflection point and uh, when we perform experiments in zone 1 that is when the substrate concentration is very much higher than here the substrate concentration is very much higher than the michaels menten constant and here the substrate concentration is very much low than the michaels menten constant so these two zones will be a little bit apart from each other they won't be just uh, you know close to each other this will be some intermittent zone so when we perform this uh, type of experiment at the two extreme ends then then uh, in the second zone where uh, the substrate concentration is very very low uh, than the km value than the michaels menten uh, coefficient then at this point the correlations will be linear the co the correlations will the correlations will be linear 
and if we have enough data in this in this zone okay if we have enough data in our zone 1 then the intrinsic kinetic parameters of the enzyme can be obtained by extrapolation on the y and x intercepts okay so at this point if we extra extrapolate so we can get the values of our intrinsic kinetic parameters but this vision is very difficult to obtain and it is very sensitive and very prone to errors and similarly if we have enough data in zone 2 the effectiveness factor can be directly obtained from the intercept in the y axis the effectiveness factor can be obtained by the intercept in the y axis because uh, the intercept here would be dependent upon the effect effectiveness factor of the design so whatever value we will be getting here would be would be value of vmax at that would be dependent upon the effectiveness factor okay so let me write it more clearly you can write it as this value would be somewhat effectiveness factor 1 upon so again as i mentioned that working on in these two zones in zone 2 and in this particular zone 1 is uh, highly prone to errors experimental errors uh, because uh, we don't know at what low concentration we will be getting uh, linear curves and uh, either we are the method of extrapolation is correct or not so this uh, this method is has uh, its own drawbacks but nevertheless uh, it it is it can be called uh, qualitatively used to assess Well, whether our system is facing only internal diffusion restrictions or internal diffusion restrictions as mentioned earlier for internal diffusion restrictions the same curve would give us a single curve in case of edr and in idr we will be getting an inflection in case of internal diffusion restrictions we will getting and will be getting inflection point and in case of edr we will be getting a smooth curve so this can be quali uh, qualitatively used to assess the system now currently uh, another um, the latest methods used for finding out intrinsic kinetic parameters are those of optimization and there are very currently there are so many robust optimization methods Uh, so you can use any of them and find out and find all the three parameters the mass transfer parameter diffusivity and the km vmax intrinsic kinetic parameters of the immobilized enzyme so other method is using optimization algorithms optimization by using optimization algorithms and nowadays it is uh, very much used as computation infrastructure has uh, developed so much that uh, back then uh, in 1980s and 90s uh, the computational techniques were not so accessible 
but now it is widespread and hence uh, these this method optimization algorithms are extremely used these days so thank you and now we will in the next lecture we will discuss about the role of uh, enzyme deactivation in enzyme kinetics thank you and have a nice day